everybody. Welcome back to the Turning Hearts podcast. Uh, just want to welcome Mr. Dennis back with us. Um, how you doing? Doing good. Good to be here. It's a good, beautiful morning. Yeah. Uh, so today I just want to go back into a little bit of um, what we were talking about last time as far as leadership goes um, in the home, uh, referring to the question that was asked about how to establish leadership in the home uh, with a diff- difficult schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, this in particular gentleman has gone for two weeks at a time and comes home for two weeks and away again for two weeks. Sometimes that can be extended to three weeks, so just long periods, but it also relates to husbands that are just have a difficult schedule. Maybe you work nights uh, and so you have to sleep during the day or um, maybe you, you high hours are demanded at work and, and you're not home for much. So how do you lead your family well when you're not there most of the time? And so we covered a few things last time as far as uh, just the practicals of, of how to operate in a, in a vision-oriented system getting with your wife, getting information about how the day goes, and, yeah. and being an initiator is what yeah. we really talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so let's go into that just a little bit more on how the husband can do that in a way that's um, effective with his wife and not you know, give as much explanation as we can to avoid conflict in the yeah. midst of like, you know, yeah. you're not conquering yeah. a, yeah. a city here, yeah. you know, it's your own home. Um, yeah. A lot of these conversations, I know we talked about the date for a little bit, um, going on a, uh, on a date and saying, you know, what do we believe about this? Yeah. What do you believe? Let me hear your answer, hear my answer. Yeah. Um, but let me say one thing. Yeah, right go there. for it. I just want to, you know, in your family, this, what I'm going to say is forever um, a foundation. And, and so, Dad, here's a hint. Husband, here's a hint. Let your wife and your kid, if, if what I'm fixing to say is a forever foundation, let you be, be characterized by doing this. Always have your Bible around. Mm-hmm. And when you're looking for answers to anything, give the Bible the first shot. Mm-hmm. Okay, because what I want to say is we have to have something, some standard, some, something bigger than us that we agree. And believers are supposed to do this, but we know in culture today, mm-hmm. we don't always. We're real tempted these days to go with the, um, the majority culture mm-hmm. view of how things should be run. And that becomes our new doctrine. Well, I know the old days they used to do this because the Bible says so, but now we've arrived. Mm-hmm. And Google says, <laughs> you know, and, and so the, the point is establish in your family that you will live by the Bible even if it hurts. Mm. And without that, no marriage, no, no church, If there's not something that I will come to and you will come to, husband and wife, brother and brother, whatever, that we will both say, now this is where I'll change when I'm against this. That foundation of we believe the Bible has every answer we need. Now, obviously, it's not going to tell you what shirt to wear today, Mm -hmm. but it has a principle in it, or, or in some cases, exact language for how to govern how to live, how to choose and lead a family. So, so I just throw that in there because yeah. you're hinting at it. And I, I want to say that Darren, I get asked all the time. And I made a choice first because I needed it. And secondly, because in the middle of my need, I thought this is really good is when my family had issues, when my wife and I had issues, is I wanted to be seen going, well, let me pull this out, dust it off. Mm-hmm. And let me as the leader, again, I'm initiating, let me find what the Bible says about it. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously it's not that I don't want, my, I want my kids to, I want them to, I want to be modeling and maybe let's bring that into our discussion. Yes. An example. Yeah. Uh, I was taught and I've always taught my kids, uh, the word leadership isn't great by itself. 
All right, here's what I mean by that. And I know I'm slightly going off subject, but yeah. it's on this Go subject because I'm thinking of the guy that's coming home and how does he, with all grace, begin to uh, take on leadership without being the dictator yeah. and making everybody mad and that's the first thing all most this. people yeah. think about. That's yeah, and and so the word that I think should always be seen with leadership is servant, servant leadership, mm -hmm. and 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 so. Uh, I lead by modeling and being an example of what I want to be seen in others. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, and you said we should talk about this, and, and so we will in a minute, so mm -hmm. bring us back to it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the authority in my home, but if I'm not modeling being under authority, it's going to be hard for those to be under my authority. Right. Okay, so that is a big subject. That's good. Um, and, and just modeling going to the scriptures so that now my wife, when she's wondering, what do I and my children, when they're wondering about different things, and I'm not talking about a two-year-old, I'm talking about an eight, 10-year-old, a 15-year-old, yeah. you want them to have seen years of dad. When dad doesn't know exactly what to do, he goes to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And when dad finds out he's wrong or not doing what the Bible says, dad models, initiates, and leads by verbally saying, I wasn't living what the Bible said, so I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And if we create that, that culture in our home, then it's easier for our wife to walk in those same shoes. It's easier for our children to walk. And trust me, when your kids get 16 and 18 and 19, you're going to need them to have learned the grace to say, no, I was wrong. I wasn't doing what the Bible said mm. or what we believe the scriptures say. So I just throw that in there that it's imperative. And so, hey, example number one, dad, uh, when you're in the home and we're dealing with how do I begin to take leadership, just become the person that uh, that's leading whether he's telling people what to do or not. Mm hmm. And it goes back to initiating. So we're sitting around the table. I just got home last night. I've been gone for two weeks. We're sitting around the table and we're eating and I'm finding out, hey, what'd you do the last two weeks, Susie? And hey, Jimmy, what'd you do the last two weeks? And sweetheart, how's your... And we're eating supper. And then you, after you listen, you just say something like, oh, I tell you what, while I was gone, let me tell you the verse I read in the Bible. Y'all aren't going to believe this. Mm -hmm. Now, it means you need to be reading the Bible. And trust me, you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's wisdom that we can't come up with there. So, yeah. but it's that example. It's that servant leadership, not demanding that I'm the boss, but just beginning to serve. And in, this is the way I told it to my kids. Like when I told my 18 year old, you're going to be in charge of the 16, the 14, the 12, the 10. And then I think there was an eight or maybe there was an eight and another one. I don't remember how many seven there is. <laughs> but I said, when you lead, don't do it from a, I'm telling you what to do. Do it from a, this is where the team's going. Would you like to join us? This is going to be a lot of fun. Invitation. It's yeah. an invitation to follow. Mm -hmm. So anyway, sorry to interrupt your thought no. there. But I think it's good that we, so dad comes home and he yeah. just starts championing the Bible. Yeah. Championing the Bible. He doesn't become preacher every day. You don't have to know the Bible. I don't have to memorize the Bible. Mm -hmm. But he's begun to use a language that I'm just thankful for the scriptures. I, I believe, you know what? We haven't always looked to the Bible for our answers. Yeah. But I heard on a podcast the other day, and I think the guy was right. Yeah. The Bible does have the answers. You just use that language. You just begin that talk. And you're de you, what's happening is you're beginning to develop a concept in your family that we need the Bible. Yeah, we need good. the Bible. And that is leading them without telling them, you better go read the Bible. <laughs> yeah. So. No, that's, that's good. That's, that's one idea there for a, for a man in that situation, a dad and a husband in that situation. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. And um, so, so we've gone out on a date. We've, we've uh, talked about what the Bible says about leadership in the home or yeah. order in the home. Yeah. Um, what, what do we believe about it? Yeah. And um, this could be a, ca a challenging spot for a lot of uh, marriages because 
uh, not every wife's going to say, oh, I believe you should be the leader. Yeah. You know, just go, yeah. just tell me yeah. what to do. Tell me, man. How, to follow. <laughs> tell me how to follow. Yeah. I'll, I'm, that I'm one with probably you. probably won't get said. Right. So and most, understandably so. Most of the homes, especially the ones we're talking about, you know, mom's kind of by default had to be the leader because yes. dad's been gone. Yeah. She just assumed the spot. She may like to be in that spot. She may not. Um, she may be waiting for him and that's a point of contention or yeah. she may be fully confident in I've got this under control. What are we having this talk about? I got to right. get home. The kids need them. Yeah. So um, what do we do when we don't agree? Yeah, when we don't agree. Well, I think that there's really, if you don't agree biblically, then in my opinion, the next step is, is, is kind of simple. I would begin to talk with my wife about who is somebody that we both respect within the church, within our sphere of brothers and sisters in Christ that, that would be an authority. And, and I'm saying as husband, let's go get help from them. Mm -hmm. Anytime a husband and wife don't agree and, and you aren't at this point to where you just found a Bible verse that says it and I'm wrong, so let's both agree this is right or you're wrong. And, and again, it's never really this right and wrong. That's just <laughs> such a wrong language in marriage. Yeah. It's, it's perspectives and they're valid and all yeah. those things. But where something's clear here and we're choosing not to live it, if this won't cause us to both say, I want to pursue this, you got to have somebody you trust. And when I say trust, you're willing to them to say, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Change this. Both of you change. Or just you need to change in this one or just you, the man, or the wife. You have to trust them to a point that they can tell you how to move. Mm -hmm. Now, so what that is, is that's you, the husband, and the wife coming under authority. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a biblical principle. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you can never have authority where you are not under authority. Amen. It's all throughout the Bible. Husbands, you're not going to lead your family if you're not characterized. It's visible. I've, you know, wife and children have watched you be told something you didn't necessarily want to hear, either through the scriptures, but even really from another human, and you change mm -hmm. based on what their advice was. Now, I know in this world today, we know everybody, we, we don't trust anybody. Author the whole system of authority has been so abused. Everybody's been so hurt. Mm -hmm. but we, didn't un we didn't trust that their heart was for us. So I don't want to, you know, how mm -hmm. dare they say that to me when they got these five issues in their life. <laughs> you know, biblically, what matters is that you submit to them as authority. There's not an authority on this earth that doesn't have issues. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for issues, you win. Mm -hmm. You'll never be under authority and you will never have authority. If we disagree, I, dad, the leader, am going to say, we're going to go get under somebody and get them to teach. Now, I would be careful because there are a lot of leaders in the church today that are saying there's no husband authority. Mm -hmm. So tell them, I wouldn't pick that one. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't because, yeah. again, this is a subject I see the Bible is clear on. Right. And I don't care what evolution culturally has happened. Right. If the Bible didn't speak on it, I'd all be for what has evolved in the culture. Mm -hmm. I would, possibly. Mm -hmm. But the, the Bible is clear, so find a church, and hopefully you're going to church and you're initiating that while you're home, and get under authority. And again, the authority that I, Dennis Aldi, am under, I'm under the authority of my Father in heaven, God, and, and Jesus, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and probably, and, and I, I would hate to give a percentage, but I'm going to say most of the time that comes through Scripture. Mm -hmm. So this really has authority in my life. And I've made a habit of my family, wife especially, seeing me say, you know, I really don't like it, but here's what I found in the Bible. So we're fixing to try to live this out best we can. Not just finding all the ones yeah. that suit you well. Yeah, I'm not just looking <laughs> for the one that tells me to go do what I want to do. <laughs> right. No. Uh, really, I, this one I don't like. This one hurts me. Mm -hmm. And then I think every man should always have at least two men 
that know what's going on in his heart and he's always submitted so that I come home from supper and I got to have coffee with this man today and just say, golly, family, wife. Whew, that was a tough talk I had with so-and-so today. And I was asking him, what do we do on this? And he just really said, you know, you need to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to jump over him at the t coffee, you know, there and say, how dare you? Because I watched you do this last week with your family. Mm -hmm. But I, I submit to his authority. And that right there is so powerful. Uh -huh. When your wife sees you submitted, it's going to invite her into a similar thing. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, again, you still got to get, you need help. Mm -hmm. So you need to go be submitted anyway. Yeah. You need help that can speak into you and her if she's still just against it. And that's not saying she's a bad lady. Again, uh, everybody, me, wives, your wife, her wife, their, you know, they've been abused, you know, by, by wrong authorities that mm -hmm. did overstep boundaries. So all those situations are real. It's not just this, we all have to, bad people don't and good people do. Mm -hmm. That's not an attitude at all. There's these real circumstances. And I feel like the Bible really speaks to that because it's not, you know, we all focus in on wives submit to your husbands. Yeah. Every, I mean, it's just like the, yeah, uh, you wrongly, have one stay yeah. away from that. But, and then there's so much discussion about that one, but we kind of neglect them the slaves obey your masters exactly and not just to tie those two together but in the in the fact that it is when there is unreasonable authority it says first peter chapter two when it says when this person's not perfect yes when this person makes mistakes and they're even over demanding or treating you wrongly or doing something that they wouldn't do yes respond with obedience and yes. respond with submission respect respect yes honor your authority um and so, and this doesn't just go, I'm not speaking to the wife, I'm speaking to the, like you're saying, the husband yeah, the when he husband. goes to work. Yeah, well, when, you just mentioned the when, key one. When the Keep husband's going. driving to work. Yeah. You know, how fast are you going? Yeah. Uh, you Ooh. don't agree with the law, but yeah. we submit because, not because I, I think that's a reasonable law, but because the, the Lord, the, the Word of God is... It says to obey those. It uh, does. So it's showing your submission. And again, no person, I can get, ask yourself this question. Are you dying to follow somebody that you've never seen follow anybody? <laughs> no. Yeah. So don't expect your wife or spouse to die to follow you when they've never seen you follow somebody. Mm -hmm. Either, again, the Bible, my pastor. And again, I know bosses have their own agenda and they may not even be Christian, but we can still be respectful with an unreasonable boss. Mm -hmm respectful doesn't mean that you know i go do something illegal for him and those times it means i honor him with my language with my heart attitude and i pretty much follow him mm -hmm. he's my boss and yeah he's out for him to get his and me not to even though it was my idea he took it and got more got a raise and i didn't mm -hmm. how dare he no you get under authority and you'll be amazed that the Bible is true. Bible says it. Mm -hmm. If you're under authority, the Lord will give you authority. If you're not under authority, he takes what you have away. Mm. Oh. Mm. And we're struggling to get this authority. Yeah. So, uh, boy, what a great answer for all of us. Mm -hmm. Every human, not just the men, not just the... Be submitted because one day you are going to have a place where you need people to submit to you, maybe in your job, maybe dad in the home, husband in the home, mom at, at doing something with her kids. Mm -hmm. Again, it's this picture. Man is under God and, and, and the wife is to be submitted under a husband. And in the very next verses are children obey your parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just this chain of authority where we're all under the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I will say this. I appreciate my wife saying this. She was struggling, you know, because I have made mistakes as a leader. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, we won't even begin to talk about them. They're too numerous. <laughs> but she said, you know, she began to look and realize that I was under God and that the Lord could even discipline me. And he has in my life. And so that gave her more of a confidence that she could follow me because mm -hmm. she watched me 
walk through some of those disciplines. Mm -hmm. Instead of rejecting them saying, well, we're not going back to that church. Mm -hmm. Those old jokers over there are terrible. <laughs> you know, but, but me walk through that gave her an ability to say, wait a minute, this man, I may can trust him even though he's made a major mistake because he's willing for somebody to speak and say, don't do that, even if they were wrong. I mean, I, again, I'm so thankful for leaders in my life that said, don't do that even though you think you should. And I chose by the grace of God not to. And six years later, they came and said, we think you ought to do this. Such a blessing to me, the, the security of knowing I had been under someone. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's powerful. and. So I think maybe even before the date or shortly yeah. after the date, <laughs> yeah. the first step of initiation would be find some authority. Find some authority. There's probably some under, over you already. You yep. just didn't realize it, but open your eyes to how are some ways that I can d demonstrate yeah. submitting to authority. And demonstrating it. And that's where we as dad in the home, you know, we go out, we come to work and sometimes we want to check the news. We want to check the sports. We want to check the hunting channel. We want to... You know, and so there's not, again, this initiation job of dad. How do I lead? I like sometimes being quiet. Now, most people may not know that. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm looking at what's going on in my living room tonight. And I go, you know what? It'd be real easy for us all just go get in the bed and read a book. But I'm fixing to say something because it's my job. And I begin to talk about my demonstration that I, some experience where I was submitted and just, I'm honest, you know, it was hard. I really almost felt like I was being mistreated even, or, or it was glorious. I was so thankful I was submitted because I didn't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, just share those examples. That's leading is being the communicator, being the talker, being the vision caster mm -hmm. all the time. Dads, we just don't rest. <laughs> we don't. And, get, and get some time to be exhausted. Yeah, we just, I, you know, I, I heard somebody say it and I agree. They, they said, you know, a long time ago, I just decided I never get a break. So I wrote it in my journal. You never get a break. End of question. And I thought, I don't want to do that. One. <laughs> I like breaks regularly. <laughs> yeah. But I got to, you know, you know what? This is true. And I did. I wrote it in my journal. Okay, from now on, don't ever look for another break. Just be, your life will be exhausted. You're going to give, you're going to give, you're going to give, you're going to give, and then you're going to give, and then when you're exhausted, you're going to give. And I relate that to spiritual warfare out of Ephesians where it says, putting on the armor of God, you stand, and having done everything, stand, and then therefore so that you can stand firm. Mm. And that is the mindset we as leaders take. I'm the dad, I'm the husband, so it just means I'm gonna give and give and give and give and give and serve and serve and serve and lead and lead. Servant lead, servant lead, servant lead, servant lead, servant lead, servant. And when I'm tired, I'm gonna serve. Mm. And if you live that, I promise people will want to follow you mm. and they'll begin to adopt those habits. It's true. This is a hard one to say because it's true. What we're characterized by is what is being learned. And if we're characterized by rejecting authority, then in our house, most people in that house are going to reject authority. Hmm. If we're characterized by not leading and being silent, and, and again, it's not leading in telling everybody what to do, but just vocalizing thoughts mm -hmm. is leading. Vocalizing beliefs from the scripture, vocalizing your quiet time. Mm -hmm then the others in the house are gonna be characterized by. So whatever we are characterized by doing, it's taught whether we're teaching it with a, a notes and a syllabus or not, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you're teaching. We know that, you're teaching yeah. all the time. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's just get active and make it good stuff. Stuff we want, right. fruit that we want. Mm -hmm. That's a key to being a husband. That's a key to being a man. That's a key to being a father. Mm-hmm. Go live what you want to see in others. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> uh, and, and just to kind of, just one story we'll share on that um, really quick that I know you have is the, um, if, uh, the one child that, this is later, this is like in the teen years or whatever when the fruit's coming out and they're rebellious and they come to meet with you or the parents ask, will you meet with them? And they 
So you know why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, so I'll, I'll, just 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 relate back to the early. This is for the the ones that have small kids. Yeah. Um, or the ones that don't have any kids at all. Just to 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 relate to the the subject of leadership and characterization and what what we're known for. Yeah. Well, I as, as a pastor uh, of a ch- small church and and just someone. People come and ask my wife, will you spend time with my 14-year-old or my 18-year-old because they're just, they've just they decided not to listen. We're going in all this conflict. And so I spend time and I just, tell me what's going on in your heart. Why are you making these choices? And, and it wasn't one time. I can tell you numerous times what I was told by a 16-year-old son, a 17-year-old daughter was, well, I can tell you why I don't want to listen to my parents. It's because they're living a double life. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I, um, I got a whooping or I got discipline, I, you know, whatever the discipline would be, because I, I chose to tell a lie. I and mean, it was really a bad deal, and I got in a lot of trouble. And a week later, the telephone, I mean, literally I was told this. The telephone rang, and my mom said, tell him I'm not here. And this was for, that happened, you know, at a younger age. And now as a 16-year-old, this kid's saying, how dare they spank me or discipline? I don't remember if it was a, a, a spanking or what, but discipline me for telling a lie and turn right around and say it's okay for an adult to tell a lie. It destroyed their ability to say don't tell a lie. Mm-hmm. So... Critical, critical. And that's like, in my opinion, that is the deepest Mm nitty-gritty of our life. Are we living what we want to see in our wife and kids Mm -hmm. as men? If you're not, I'm going to say this in all kindness, you won't see it. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect in A leader cannot expect people to go where he hasn't gone. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. So if the integrity of your own heart isn't, character mm-hmm. and i'm when i say characterized by something we're all going to make mistakes right okay These so 70 percent of the time i do this but that 30 percent that i fail i have the character to say oh forgive me mm-hmm. i chose wrong i lied i mm-hmm. told a little bitty lie because i was uncomfortable in the pressure of the moment I caved in and, oh, I regret it. I tell you what, I regret it so much. I'm going over to see him. And you tell your wife and kids this example. Yeah. Don't just do it in your mind. Demonstrate it. Demonstrate, initiate. We're still mm. focusing on those. Re- I'm going to go tomorrow and I'm going to tell them I told them a little white lie because I just was nervous and didn't know what to say in the moment. And, and all of a sudden you're living something that they're going to be caught. That you're not going to have to tell them, don't ever tell them. They're going to just choose or have a more freedom to choose it. How much, still make mistakes. how much leadership do you actually show in just that little simple thing? You're showing repentance. Yeah. You're demonstrating how to make it right. Yeah. And you're acquiring leadership of your kids because they're watching. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they're, they're well, going, I'm going to follow him. So you're getting your kids to sign up in an act that you're doing just to redeem yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's the example of the guy that might be, I don't know what he does for a living, but let's say he's a welder. And, and let's say that he, um, he, t- he goes into a classroom and they show up on the board, these are the eight steps to a perfect weld. I promise you he won't weld near as good if that's all he ever sees as if he has a person that says, no, look, hold the stick like this and approach it like this and then do your hand like this. Mm-hmm. And you could write that on the board all day long and he's going to try it but with him kind of grabbing the hand, doing it first, a teacher do it. What we see is way better oh. than what we read. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, we'll we want to read it. We need those classes. Yeah. But I'm telling you, your kids and your wife watching you walk through those things will so much open the door for them to walk in. It. Mm. It's true. Powerful. All right. Well, I think that's all we got for today. We're, tomorrow we'll be leading on to a different different subject but i'm sure we'll be back to this one many times mm. um but if if there's some topics maybe that uh, relate to this that you yeah more say, specific yeah more specific anything. i wanted to there's one question i had in the middle of that um email that in let us know specifically what you're dealing with in in the middle of all that or maybe there's a response that yeah. your wife or kids are giving you that we didn't address yeah um 
we're not afraid of this subject. Uh, yeah. And this is a glorious, glorious thing um, yeah. that is in the Lord's heart. So email us in. I, I want to finish yeah. with this. Yeah, go ahead. One more thought. Okay, because you said glorious and it triggered my mind. <laughs> It is glorious in Ephesians chapter 5, the very verses we're using to say that God wants order. He said, this, this husband and wife is the mystery of Christ mm. in the church. It's a miracle. It, it is a miracle. It's this beautiful beyond what we could probably write out what this will display. So it's worth all our effort. It's worth our prayer. It's worth you know, seeking out help. How do I live this? How do we, my wife and I, live this for our kids so they get to live it someday? So no, it is so beautiful. True. Appreciate you listening for sure. So much. Uh, yeah, and email uh, Dennis. At turninghearts.com. Mm -hmm. There's also info at turninghearts.com. Either one of those I get will be happy to, to get more detailed because I know there's so many scenarios out there. Well, yes. I tried this. And this came at me, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> she said this, and I just turned white. And, uh, <laughs> yes, and if, if you guys want to go deeper into some more teaching that Dennis and, and even hear from Dara, we'll hear from Dara in the future, but uh, if, you, if there's, you want to sit down with your wife or your family and uh, go through some teaching, uh, maybe you have older kids that are getting ready to get married and you know that yeah. they're not prepared for it at all, uh, yeah. I want you to go to teachable.com. Well, it, right now we have a parenting class yes. that is available. Uh, it's streaming. There's a cost, a fee there, but it get, lets you stream it for a minimum of a year. So you have plenty of time to go through it. It's eight weeks long, but it's at uh, Turning Hearts, one word, Turning Hearts with S dot, teachable.com. Okay. And that should bring you in, and then you could sign up there and, and do that. And there's thing. an option on there to buy it and actually get the call or have some sort of Yes, that's right. There's an option you. if you would like just some personal conversation, uh, time set aside where you uh, get to call us and we answer that question. Yeah, we mm -hmm. want that. Because again, you know, all our families, are, there's so many scenarios. Yeah. It's not, there is no cookie cutter answer to everything. And, and we understand that. And how do you approach these subjects? Because this is where we live. Yeah. This is every day I wake up and you know, here, it is again. here we are again, I, my wife and my kids. And, and your wife wakes up every day and there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not just us with our wives. No. It's, it's wives with us and no. kids and all the stress and, and, the, and the joys of that. Yeah, if you so. think you got all your, your questions answered, just ask your wife because yeah. there's probably a whole bunch more. <laughs> amen. Amen. So amen. You guys have a good one. Thank you. <laughs>